Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today we are going to make an animation which I have done in animation nodes in the past. Uh, but this time we are going to do that in geometry nodes 3.0 alpha with using field. So let's start. So firstly, let's create whatever objects. Uh, maybe in this time we'll try to create a UV sphere, but it really does not matter because we can add uh, everything within geometry nodes. So once I create this UV sphere, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> it does not make any difference. So here I'm going to take a curve line and I'll probably take a negative and combine XYZ and combine XYZ. Just uh, and probably depends on the Z axis. And then plug into the start and the end. So once we have this curve line, it's basically just a really straight line. So here I'm going to just uh, use the bevel curve node to give it a little bit of thickness so that you can visualize that. Okay. Uh, next thing is, uh, so essentially bevel curve is just uh, for visualization in this particular case. Then we're going to point instance. Uh, we're going to point instance on this curve. But uh, this curve line only have start and end, so we need to resample it. The sample count is very important, and then we need to take another circle curve. So now we have this three. Uh, I'm going to take that three, and this is a very interesting moment because this will essentially turn everything into a helix. So let's take a float range. I'm going to use the step mode, so I do not need to input anything within the geometry. And uh, take the take the combine XYZ. Uh, wait, wait, what? Combine XYZ. Yes, combine XYZ. Actually, you can use the combine RGB. It does not make any difference, technically speaking. And once you have that, I'm going to take the start at zero, and stop a little bit, uh, something like that. So not too too much. Otherwise, it's just uh, completely pointless. Okay. Once we have this, a little bit of rotations. Then we take a kind of a float range to the to the scale as well. Only difference is that probably I'm going to take it to the one and the two. So now the scale becomes too big, which is very awkward to even look at. So here, what we're going to do uh, is to take a float range. Uh, no, no, no. To take a float curve. So that's the only the middle portion. Is the maximum. And I realized this does not work. <laughs> the reason it does not really work on um, one side is that you need to plug things into values. Uh, this this auto linkage was the factory is a bug. Another reason is that you need to use the stop mode so that you can interpolate that. Otherwise, you do not know the maximum. How do you actually interpolate that? Uh, and in this case, probably not use the float range, but use the curve parameter. So that the curve parameter node essentially goes from the uh, beginning to the end as 0 to 1 for a curve. So this only applies for a curve. So it's like a, you know the start and you know the stop. Uh, you know the start is zero. You know the stop is one. So this is how it works. And uh, yes, and then we're going to uh, plug the maths just so that to add a basic uh, scale for the zero value. And then we can add a multiply so that increase increase the general scale. So this is, uh, there's, I think a multiply add is also okay. No, probably still add multiply. Sometimes I like add multiply instead of multiply add. Yes, but anyway, this is it. So now this is, we have this stuff and uh, this visualization, you can see is, there are some spline which is staying, some spline which is sick. Uh, I don't want, not want to think about that for the moment because this is really just for visualization. In reality, I don't, not to look at them. The whole point, however, is that I would like to connect uh, 
uh, one vertices, one vertices, one vertices, one vertices of each triangles. And once I connect these, and I repeat the same process with the other vertices, uh, other vertices, other vertices, other vertices, other vertices, other vertices. Uh, no, actually it's here. So then I form the second spline and the third spline. Repeat the same process. In geometry nodes, we do not offer loop. So I do have a presets uh, to do this kind of function, but uh, there are parts that you have to do a little bit of manual labor. So this preset has the same name as I do in animation nodes presets, which is called a helical connection. This node, however, is a little bit you can see the design with the one in animation nodes, which is very, very different because not uh, anywhere, not anywhere close because animation nodes support a loop. You have the iteration, geometry nodes you do not. Um, also, there are many other reasons. For example, you get the data from geometry so that you have to a lot of kind of horrible sockets. So we're going to discuss how you really link them, uh, which is kind of very tricky. So first thing that you need to know is the you put the instances into loop input, but the instances are kind of empty, so you need to realize them all the times. I do not provide automatic realization because I'm concerned with other things, but uh, yeah, anyway. And then you sample the from, so you take the most, uh, basically you take the most, uh, uh, you take the realized instances at still, and the length, the length is how many of this kind of hexagon you have. So you plug this resample curve. And the branches is how many, is it almost the counts as how many times you are going to loop these presets. So the amount essentially is defined by how many vertices you have for this unit. So if I have three, then I loop three. If I have four, I loop four. So you take this uh, curve into the place. Then immediately you can actually see I form a spline. Uh, here I probably do not plug this into looping, but yes. So now I have actually formed a spline that essentially connects from vertices to vertices. And this you can see how it works. And the labor part is that you have to repeat the same process if you're going to loop it. But the good part was Blender is if you select the both, uh, actually, let's just repeat the four times because I haven't even tried that. So if you repeat it four times and you select all the nodes and hit F, 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 then you loop everything. Oh, then you have you form the four spines, which is cool. <laughs> so this is actually not too difficult. This is you. So you do. So you really duplicate them and then. So let's do that again. So with more units. So let's take a six. So we need a six nodes and I duplicated this again so I make sure that I have these six nodes in total and I select all the nodes and hit F F F F F. Okay then it, it's done. It's done. Uh, and this is procedural so you really just uh, take increase the count then you increase the amount of loops. Okay this is cool. Amazing. Um, so this is okay. So once we have this we just manage to deal with this uh, cur curve or interpolate I'll probably just shrink that a little bit. Yeah, so this is also a way to think about that. You can actually definitely increase the amount count so that they look kind of smoother. Or actually, you can actually use the resample at the end. Or oh, there is also fillet curve nodes, essentially to bevel these kind of edges to smooth them out. There are many different ways you can play around with it, but the general idea is already there. Here I got reminded, however, uh, remember firstly we actually created a kind of a cube, uh, or actually a sphere, because the, the whole point of animation is that if I have a sphere, and I want to expand this curve when in, at, the, at the place where I have this sphere, so here, instead of using this kind of curve parameter, uh, I'm going to use a completely different method. So let's delete everything. So we're going to basically use the proximity fold node. And we can use our sphere as the object and use the position into the source position. 
and plug the fourth into the skill. The immediately everything crashed because uh, the we need to deal with the minimum and deal with the maximum. Another thing is the sphere and the skill does matters. Uh, in this case, mm -hmm. actually, I'll probably need to update this a little bit more. But yes, so let's use the controller instead. Yes, and then scale it up. Yeah, I think I definitely need to update the presets in this. I just got reminded. Okay, so this is also cool. So once we have this, we basically finish this animation. And let's take a parenting. Let's take a parenting node. And let's take a, another controller. So this is the parent. And so in this case, we can use this uh, parent empty to move this spline. And you can even scale that up or scale that down, even rotate that. But yeah, rotate that does not really deal with anything because the place to parent that is a little bit different. Okay, but anyway, this is kind of ideas. So you can play around with this uh, and let's rotate this. Oh, but if you rotate this, you realize uh, it gets crushed into uh, one axis. So the reason to, is that uh, when we create this kind of rotation of our these circles, they are not aligned with the tangent to our curve. So here we have our combine x, y, z. So here what we do is to align root to vector. Plug everything into the rotations. Uh, and then take a tangent. So now we successfully finish the whole thing. Yes, and because this is instances, so we just create. So let's just create a uh, material set material. Because otherwise the material does not go with the instances, you have to you have to use the set material. And the name as the spine. With the sphere, let's just add up whatever other colors. But uh, yeah, basically this is kind of uh, yet. This is really all it. Uh, with the preset, it makes your life much, much easier because it took me a kind of a lot of time to actually think about this. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.